This is HRT 125 Plants Society Plants with Medical Uses, uh, Part 2. But many other plants, uh, as we've talked about in Part 1, uh, that human beings have realized could play a role taking care of us. Now here's a plant uh, called Digitalis. Um, it was also called foxgloves um, because they felt that foxes could take these little cone-shaped areas and put them over their fingertips and be walking through the woods much more quieter. One of the other things that you know right here, if you look at this, insect sees in this sort of spotted area here, it actually mimics a landing pier. So insects are attracted by this and actually will land on here and go in to get the pollen and the, the honey that is there. It had been used for many years uh, with people with heart failure. William Withering was the one who described this in England that if they took this and made a, a liquid out of it and gave it to people who at that time uh, were swollen with uh, fluids, uh, they did not realize this, but they were the body was swollen with fluids and this particular drug, Digitalis, made the heart beat stronger and faster. So consequently, all this fluid could be pumped through the heart and pumped back in the kidneys and, uh, and executed. Uh, we still use this uh, today. Aspen is a huge uh, find among plants that people have used for years. Uh, Hippocrates, who was a Greek physician, wrote about this in the 5th century before Christ. That uh, if you took the bark from the willow tree, if it ease aches and pains, reduce fevers. Uh, it was found in many other societies and written down how the bark from this willow tree could cure a variety of ailments. Even in the United States, the Cherokees used this as about for fever, rheumatic pains, uh, sore throats. Uh, people learned early on that uh, it was the bark itself that could be mixed. It was a very bitter uh, type material. And so people found different ways of trying to make it into more palatable. Uh, Bayer Ashburn was one of the few that uh, actually was able to make it into a powder. And um, it was then uh, made into a pill and could be swallowed. Uh, incidentally, at the same time, um, because of this bitterness, uh, Bayer just felt that they could make another drug. And at that time, uh, this is when heroin was invented because it seemed to be a better pain reliever. And it was true, it was a better pain reliever at the time, but as its shortcomings and its addictive uh, obvious, uh, aspirin then became a much more widely used drug. For years, uh, we weren't quite sure how aspirin actually worked. Uh, and it turned out that it worked by affecting some of those small chemicals of the prostaglandins in the human system. So consequently, it could either uh, cause an ulcer or it could cure an ulcer. It could, um, it could, by blocking these prostaglandins, make the blood flow through the system much easier. It, it did this by preventing clotting. And so the red blood cells and the platelets would stick together and uh, uh, consequently um, inflammation would be reduced much quicker, uh, swelling could be reduced much quicker. And uh, nowadays uh, we, we've taken that and we can give this to patients who have heart attacks, uh, patients who have blood clots and um, make them get better quicker. It does have side effects. And we don't tend to give that to uh, children anymore. 
another huge uh, drug out there uh, that was cured by plants is malaria. Uh, malaria is a, a disease which is actually caused by this small protozoan that you see on the right side. Uh, it's a parasite of the genus Plasmodium. The mosquitoes are infected by this. Uh, and what happens is they land on a human or another animal uh, as they inject an anticoagulant into our system. That anticoagulant has some of this plasmodium. Plasmodium then gets into our system. Uh, this has a huge life cycle. The, it, it lives in our liver quite a bit and will continue to circulate throughout the system unless controlled by some drugs. It became a huge problem in the United States uh, because of the Vietnam War and uh, almost 100% of the veterans bringing back some type of malaria with them. It's, it is a problem throughout the world. The red areas here show the malaria risk. The other areas have controlled uh, the malaria, have we cured it. We do have the ability to stop malaria. However, getting the proper drugs or the proper treatment into these areas that are red have proven to be uh, heavily money dependent. And we have been unable to uh, get malaria drugs to all the populations to those areas that are red. It causes 350 to 500 million infections every year, which means one to three million deaths for a disease that we can treat with a plant. We're getting this plant through these areas, but it's taking much more time and money than we have realized. We realized early on that again, taking the bark of the chinchona tree, which we call quinine, and get that into our system, this is something that will cure the disease. It's been used for many years. Uh, the Europeans didn't write about it until 1640. It was used to treat malaria in Rome in the early 1600s. I have to remember that many areas in the Mediterranean, the cities were based where rivers joined the Mediterranean. And because of this, there were swampy conditions there, which was perfect for the mosquitoes to be. At that time, no one knew that it was the mosquito that did this, and uh, it was called swamp fever. It was, um, it, it was able to kill people from popes as well as commoners. Uh, the Chinese even wrote about it uh, 2,700 years before Christ. Again, what they were able to do was describe a way to treat it. And people have been doing this for many years. Uh, nowadays, uh, it was the gin and tonic that seemed to do this. Uh, in India, where the British first made the serious attempts to control the disease, uh, they were able to force all their soldiers there to take the antivirus anti-malaria uh, ingredients. However, they did realize it was very bitter. So at that time, the easiest thing to do was mix it with gin, a little bit of water and sugar and lime juice, and we had the gin and tonic. It continued its years as an afternoon tradition for the British soldiers who were there, and this then spread throughout the world. Uh, but when you're taking your gin and tonic, you're actually treating yourself for malaria. Ephedra, another plant out there that has gained a lot of notoriety recently. Many athletes have taken it and have gotten into problems. Uh, again, here's a uh, shrub that's throughout um, most of the world. Uh, it's been used for thousands of years. The Chinese have used it for over 5,000 years. Um, one of the problems is it's both a stimulant 
and they're thermogenic. So it will raise our temperature, make us feel good, and it was very helpful in dieting. It was also a stimulant, so athletes could use this to help train themselves. However, because of overuse, uh, many athletes have gotten to serious medical conditions and it has been banned in uh, several areas. We are now readdressing this because we have found that since the Chinese have been using it for over 5,000 years safely, uh, if we could control the way it was utilized, it would be a, a much better drug. Consequently, it is being used this way now. Another huge plant out there, the aloe vera plant. Uh, this is something that we frequently see in homes. You know, moms would crack the leaves, and you see a cracked leaf over here, and it's got that sort of sticky substance. They rub on our infection. They run on our, rub on our uh, sunburn and make us feel well. Uh, humans use it for a variety of other things. They had the, uh, the Egyptians used it to treat uh, stomach problems. At that time, the Nile River was filled with different bacteria and protozoa uh, that could give huge uh, stomach problems. And the Egyptians learned that taking the juice of the aloe vera could uh, cure this. This is throughout Africa, throughout uh, South Africa, in, the, in Cape at the very bottom at the Cape Province, the mountains of Africa, Madagascar, Arabian uh, Peninsula. It's now throughout most of the world. Uh, we have only found recently how it worked. Uh, recently, uh, we have found how. Uh, it actually works very similar to aspirin by blocking small hormones called prostaglandins in the system. Uh, by controlling which of the prostaglandins that it is can be blocked, we can cure an ulcer with this. We can uh, cure sunburn. We can uh, we can actually uh, treat certain cancers this way. If uh, a limb is cut off by adding aloe vera to it, we may actually uh, get better blood supply when we reattach this limb. It also works by uh, thinning the blood, by uh, causing the platelets not to stick together and blocking these prostaglandins. The Pacific U, uh, another plant that we have found that actually will use to uh, treat cancer. We found that growing in this small area, the bark from the Pacific U, when purified and given to women with breast cancer, it would cure some of the diseases. At one point, it was almost wiped off uh, the northern part of the United States because of over uh, production of uh, anti-cancer drugs. Chinese happy tree was the one that has, uh, again, been used by the Chinese for years, but now we are learning that it can be used in Western medicine also. Uh, we can use it to treat uh, different types of cancer. We can use it for uh, HIV also. It is being investigated to treat a huge variety of different types of cancer with good effects. The ginkgo tree has been around for millions of years. It has no close living relatives. If you look at uh, the rain pattern, um, it is unique among trees. Um, it's probably one of the oldest trees out there, which has remained unchanged. There are male and females. The female has the berries. Uh, the berries are actually uh, quite sweet if you can get past the, the smell. It uh, does have a, a lot of sulfur in it, so consequently the smell is not particularly very good. Uh, it's used in many uh, Asian uh, festivals. And we have found that it also works by um, blocking chemicals that ca cause platelets to stick together or other white blood cells to stick together. And so consequently people who have um, diseases that block the cardiovascular system seem to get better with some ginkgo. Sal palmetto uh, is something that we have used to treat uh, prostate disease. Um, 
the Europeans had learned many years ago that by using this, uh, they could cause the prostate to shrink. The prostate is an organ that is around the male genital urinary tract. And as we get older, it starts to swell up. And since it is like a donut, it will actually uh, close down the output to the male urinary tract. And by taking sal pimento, uh, we can get that to shrink down. These are some of the many uh, other plants that are out there. Uh, the last one to talk about is St. John's wort. Uh, this is one that the Europeans have been used for many years to treat depression. Uh, we call it St. John's wort because it was harvested on St. John's Day uh, to prevent evil. We now use it to treat, it was used to treat the inflammation and it's antiseptic. It's used in Europe as an antidepressant.